In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Last Sunday, I showed the movie titled Nefarious uh, for those who parishioners who wanted to attend. Uh, many of you did, and many of you have seen it at some other time, and I understand why many would uh, not necessarily want to watch a movie of this nature. And I don't intend to give an elaborate discourse about the many aspects of this movie, though uh, many aspects apply to the readings of this Sunday Mass, and one in particular I want to highlight. Now the movie Nefarious is basically a conversation for the most part between a man who is on death row only hours from his execution who is clearly possessed by a demon known by the name Nefarious, which means evil. And he is in conversation with an atheist psychiatrist. No surprise there either. And he has a mission for this uh, atheist. And for that reason, the demon has arranged for this conversation to happen before he is executed. And the plan is that this psychiatrist will write, in effect, the Gospel of Lucifer. Lucifer is the name of the most powerful demon, a fallen angel, more often referred to as Satan. But as you recall, our Lord spoke of Satan often by that name, but also spoke of him as Lucifer falling from the heavens. So this angel, which may have been the greatest of all angels, or at the height of whatever choir to which he belonged, went from being a light bearer created for that purpose to chaos, which is what the word satanos or Satan means. So back to this movie, this demon Nefarious who serves his master. And among the fallen angels, there is a very strict hierarchy. No two angels are equal. That's true among the good angels as well. And they submit to each other, not out of love, but uh, out of justice and in hatred. Nefarious, on behalf of his master, Lucifer, wants this man to write a gospel. Call it the Gospel of Lucifer. Call it the Gospel of Darkness, whatever you want to call it. But it basically follows a theme that has afflicted humanity from the start, but has been popularized in various cults going back thousands of years. The idea that Lucifer is actually more of an advocate and friend of humanity than God himself. Because God imposes all sorts of restrictions on us and commandments and demands. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, thou shalt not take his name in vain. Thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath. Thou shalt honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not covet. Shalt, 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 shalt not, shalt not, shalt not. Nefarious points out, Lucifer has only one commandment. Only one. 
Do whatever you will. Do as thou shalt. That's it. Whatever you want. That's the commandment of Lucifer. Do what thou will. So no wonder his gospel is so attractive to the fallen nature and so widespread in this fallen world. Because in our fallen nature, we're inclined toward do whatever thou will versus thou shalt not do this or that or this or that. And, of course, Lucifer makes all the promises that go with that. But look at Lucifer. He is fallen. He is chaos. He brought down Eve. Do whatever you will. Eat that fruit. And that's the message he's been given ever since. But that's a very, very attractive and now prevalent gospel of the world. St. Paul, in our first lesson, he warns, do not be children of disobedience. Do not be children of darkness. Be children of light. It's the gospel of Lucifer that the children of darkness follow, and following the prince of darkness, or it's the gospel of Jesus Christ which is the gospel of light and truth. And so many follow the gospel of Lucifer, and it is so prevalent. But it's not just from the masses that look to that gospel. In very large part, it is the failure of those who are charged with protecting us from the gospel and forces of Lucifer. And in the gospel, in speaking about demons, Jesus uses an analogy, a metaphor. When a man is strongly armed, no one can enter his courtyard unless a stronger man comes. Then he enters. My friends, those who have been charged with guarding the courtyard, or to use another image of our Lord, of watching over the sheepfold. They have thrown down their arms. In fact, they've given their arms to the enemies. And the worst of them are wolves, and many of them are hirelings. What's the difference? A wolf actually allies with the enemies, and a hireling just runs away. And that's the situation we face. All of the arms at our disposal and that of the institutional church, which are the sacraments and the sacramentals, and so much more, have been stripped away for 60 years. And so those charged with protecting us have, in fact, disarmed themselves. So what do you do? Well, if there was a home invasion, I'd protect myself. And I'd protect my family. So let's use that image not just a courtyard, this is a home invasion. And we don't have the people that should be armed and protecting us, but we have arms. We have the spiritual arms, we have the mass, we have the sacraments, we have the rosary, and so much more. This mass in particular. They want to take that away from us as well but they have not and they cannot. This thing, this matter that was in a fictional movie, it's very real. 
nefarious, evil, gospel of Lucifer, all of it is widespread worldwide, in large part because the institutional church has stripped us of our spiritual arms. Then it falls to you. This is a home invasion. They're after you, and if you have a family, they're after your family. Stand fast. Keep those arms ready. Stand your post. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.